But in Nas, let me just give some virtues of al uh, Mu'awwidatan, the al falaq and al uh, Nas. Uh, it's a means of protection. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, uh, and this is reported by an Nasa'i, classified as authentic by Al Bani. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu was described as Abu Sa'id al-Khudri said that he used to seek refuge in Allah azza wa from jan and from evil eye saying I seek refuge in Allah from jinn and from the evil eye of humans he said until uh, al-falaq and al-nas were revealed then he started uh, using them as uh, a protection uh, and left everything else uh, and just stuck to these two uh, so he used these sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, as a general pr spiritual protection uh, for himself and it is also a means of treatment aisha radiyallahu anha uh, says and this is reported by al bukhari whenever the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam suffered from any illness um, any weakness or what have you uh, he used to uh, recite al muawwidat the qul a'udhu rabb falaq and qul a'udhu rabb nas and blow now blowing without spit it's it's dry it's not wet spit okay uh, and when he sallallahu alaihi wasallam became extremely ill when he was very ill in other words he could not do that himself i would recite the surahs on his own hands and then wipe uh, his body with his own hands because of the blessings and the barakah in his hands sallallahu alaihi wasallam of course there are <coughs> <coughs> they are part of the morning and the evening uh, adhkar and this is reported by an nasai classified as authentic by al albani uh, abdullah ibn khubayb uh, said uh, one night it was raining it was very dark and uh, we went out uh, looking for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he said he would lead the the prayer for us uh, so he came out and took me by hand he took abdullah by hand and he said uh, recite qul huwa allahu ahad qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas every day in the evening and in the morning thrice it will suffice you meaning protect you from every evil uh, it is also part of the uh, adhkar one uh, recites when he or she goes to bed uh, uqba ibn amr said and this is reported by ahmed classified as authentic by al albani he said whilst i was uh, taking uh, hold of the leash of the animal uh, which the Prophet ﷺ was writing uh, in one of the battles, he said, O oh, Uqba ibn Amr, should I not teach you a surah uh, the like of which was not revealed in the Torah, in the book of Psalms, or the Injil, or the Quran? Uh, he said, Every night. You should recite قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ الرَّفَلَقْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ No one can seek refuge and protection by means of anything better than these. There is nothing stronger, more powerful in protection than these three uh, surahs. Aisha رضي الله عنها said and this is again the adhkar of going to bed she said and this is reported by al-bukhari and muslim she said whenever the prophet وسلم, went to bed was about to go to sleep he would uh, combine his hands like this and blow and in other narrations he would blow three times and then he would recite قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ فَلَقْ and then he would wipe his body, his entire body, as much as he possibly could 
starting from his head and his face and the front of his body and then until he reached as far as he could. And he would do that uh, three times. And when he uh, became ill, his death illness, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she said when he became ill, he commanded me to do that instead for him. Notice, even at that moment, he did not abandon this practice, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This reflects how important it is for us to stick to it as a means of following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And this is enough virtue that you're doing something because you're following to the footsteps of Muhammad ﷺ. It is enough reward to be, to be upon the sunnah because you will not be amongst those who will be kicked out on the day of judgment from al kawthar when he would say, my ummah, my ummah, and they would tell him, you don't know what they did after you, at least you will be doing your best into following and sticking to what he left behind. His legacy is this. This is what we inherited from him, our deen. It reflects how important it is. And it is also a means of protection. As we said, the devil is out there, plus the one who is next to you, plus those who are around you from human devils. Don't you wake up sometimes, or during the course of the day, you feel your heart or your chest tight, and you have no way of finding out why. You have no justification for that tightness, you feel saddened. Well, this is nothing but the work of the devil. What you need to do is recite immediately, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ In one of the narrations, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ is one. Uh, and let's conclude with a statement, a statement from uh, Ibn al-Qayyim. He said, there is nothing more beneficial or stronger to repel or protect against evil, against magic, than divine cure in the form of dua, dhikr, and recitation, the recitation of the Quran. He said, because the heart that is full of the mention of Allah Azza wa Jal and has a daily portion of adhkar which he persistently recites and does not abandon and leave and become lazy and weaken. He said this is a great reason to protect him against uh, the evil of magic or its, its effect. Meaning, even if someone is, is afflicted with it, these adhkar and especially these surahs, the three surahs, nas, falaq, and ikhlas, are very powerful and strong in removing that and weakening the impact or effect of that magic or any other evil like an evil eye or envy or what have you. We ask Allah's protection against all evil. Uh, and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to follow into the footsteps of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfirullah.